everybody. It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode of Wrenching in the Garage. I guess this is episode six of this thing because, again, it's an absolute lousy day outside. And, um, well, wife's car is still blocking the driveway and I really don't feel like moving it just to move this to the outside. It's raining anyway, you know? So I'm not ready to start on another tractor yet. Just yet, you know? Uh, as you guys saw from yesterday's fix, um, this is pretty much ready to go. Um, I actually had a subscriber. Uh, he's been watching for a while, but it's the first time he ever commented, I believe. And uh, he saw my part of the video yesterday where I tried to take this off and I thought I had an extra lens in the back, you know, where I would just keep the LED light for myself because both stock lights work, you know, so this is kind of redundant, you know what I mean? You don't really need it. So I was going to just take this off and keep it and put the nice lens over it and have a LED light, but I couldn't find it or I never really had one. So he said that he has one, exact one, that's just sitting around his house not doing anything, so I think he might send it to me. In that case, that would be great. You know, I could take the LED light off, put the new lens on. As you also saw, this left tire had a slow leak, so um, it had bothered me for like two, three episodes, and finally I, I did put ATF fluid in here, bounced it around and stuff, and look at this. Solid, man. This is the seventh wheel that I've put ATF fluid in here. Works like a charm. Who turned me on to this? Subscriber Rick Browerman. Shout out to Rick Browerman for suggesting the ATF. Instead of going out and buying slime, if you got leftover ATF sitting around, shove that in here. Works. But Murphy's Law, what goes wrong will go wrong, right? I noticed today that the left one's kind of low. <laughs> so, actually, you know, it's a, I think it's a slow leak, you know what I mean? Um, I'm just going to pump air in it and, and see if it holds up, you know? Um, it's a very slow leak. Should I just put ATF in there? Oh, I might as well. So I'm going to do that. And also what bothers me, because I have a little OCD, I'm not crazy OCD, because if I had crazy OCD, this garage wouldn't look like this. You know what I mean? Somebody with major OCD would have the garage completely immaculate, you know? So I'm not that OCD. But I do have OCD because that bothers me. I mean, I tried ATF on here. It, it's, it's so faded in this area. I don't know what causes just this area to fade and nowhere else, you know what I mean? Unless somebody poured some kind of liquid on here, or maybe uh, acetone or gas or whatever, you know, and, and it just faded right here. So, I mean, other than this, it would look like a pretty decent tractor, you know what I mean? So, um, as you see, the quick color paint did very well here. It looks very nice. But uh, I want to I wanna do that. And so it's going to be a shorter episode today because you know why? My wife was kind of getting on my case. She says, I know you guys are ready for this. Did you do our taxes yet? I says, no, I didn't do the taxes yet. It's not April 15th yet. And not only that, they delayed it until July 15th. So I have three extra months to, to do it, right? And so she goes, uh, well, do we owe any money? I says, do we ever owe any money? She goes, no. So we're getting money back? I said, yeah. She goes, well, then why are you waiting three extra months? Get the money now. I'm like, in a crazy way, that actually makes sense, right? Why am I delaying me getting money back? So yeah, I have to do my taxes today. I dread doing my taxes every year. I wish I could just go pay somebody to do it. But then that goes to my personality as to always trying to do it myself to save money. 
So why am I going to spend $250 on some nut doing it, right, when I could do it myself with TurboTax for $40 or $60, right? Which is, by the way, deductible. That's right. Your tax preparation software is tax deductible. I mean, you don't get it all back, but it goes into a formula. You get a percentage back, you know, I think. Now with this new Trump uh, tax law, um, you, don't get, you don't get to write off a lot of stuff. It's just a standard deviation that's higher. But uh, if you itemize, it's, it's almost not even worth it anymore. You know what I mean? But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Instead of me removing the entire hood, and this mechanism is very um, iffy, like, if you don't have it just right, you know, this hood opening up will touch here and you won't be able to open the hood. Same story I had with that other thing, you know. So I'm just going to leave it on there. You're going to leave it on there, Henry? Shut up. Now you're getting it all dusty, Henry. I don't care. You know what I mean? You don't care. Eh. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, you know what I mean? I'm just going to get her done. Hey, that, that'll work. Huh? Eh? See? I could just spray this without doing any overspray. Although I have to use like real paint, so I might get some overspray because real paint is not like quick color. Quick color paint is like, you know, you have to use a lot for it to overspray, you know. But uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give this a, a fast whip. So uh, last time I went to get paint over at Home Depot, I knew that I was going to need this red eventually because this is my favorite color red this is called sunrise red and i love glossy so i got the glossy sunrise red over at home depot this costs about 479 i think now this is the one that i always have trouble with the rust-oleum caps when i every time i pull it open i think i break the nozzle more times than i don't so uh, i'm just gonna try really I, i'm gonna do exactly what they tell you pinch this side here Can I break it, Henry? Yes, I think I will. Oh! Success! Success! I tell you, success! So I have this, uh, it's also made by Rust-Oleum. It's a handle, right? Where, it, where your finger won't get all uh, sprayy. You know, <laughs> you won't spray your finger. Uh, it's away from things, and you can kind of, you know, do the sweeping motion easier with a handle. It has a trigger, too. It's pretty cool. This is like $2 or $2.50, something like that. So it goes on there just like that. And uh, I'm going to shake it a little bit. Shake it up. Ooh, shake it up. Okay. Because this is relatively a large piece of area that we want to cover, I kind of have to do it pretty fast. Because the thing is, if you're doing just a small section, right, you could just spray it, 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 and then you'll be done with it, right? However, you got to keep going, keep going, keep going like this. Once you get a, to get around here, right, this part here is already starting to dry. Then when you finish this part right over here, right, it's starting to dry over here already, right? And then you have to come over here and spray the sides like this, right? So over here, if it's starting to dry, the overspray from this will get on here and it won't be glossy anymore. So you gotta, I gotta be really quick about this, you know? I just uh, used a compressor and I blew out the dust and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go from top to bottom because this way gravity will pull the spray to cover more. So you're not really wasting it. I guess it would be the same thing if you're doing this, but then, but then when you spray here, the spray will go here and you're wasting some. But it's not a lot, you know, it's no big deal. But I think if I do it this way, 
you have less chance of dropping contaminants. Like if I started here and I went this way, stuff on my jacket or dust could fall on it, you know? So technically it should be top to bottom. Uh, I'm not really 100% sure, but that just makes sense, you know? So here I go. Twelve inches apart, that's what they tell you. Twelve inches away, I mean. Hurry up, Henry, gotta do the sides. I'm not gonna mess with it. I was just about to go nuts over here, but I don't want to overspray. That should be good. See, that didn't take very long at all. And you know what? It looks great. Doesn't look, doesn't that look great, fellas? Look. Wunderbar. So you know what? Uh, while I'm waiting for that, right? Multitasking, right? Multitasking. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna take that wheel off. So, uh, I mean, since it bothers me, I gotta just put some ATF in here anyway, you know, just to make sure it doesn't leak, even though it's a super slow leak, I still wanna fix it, you know? Anyway, uh, here are some shout outs to uh, three or four guys that bought my stickers this past few days. Uh, thank you very much for the support. If you guys would like to buy a sticker and help support the channel, uh, please just go to eBay, right? And go into their search area and just type in mowers blowers sticker. You'll find two of my stickers, the rounded edged one and the OG one, the original gangster one, the jagged edged one, the old school one. Um, I sell them for $3.99 each, free shipping, right? I just put a stamp and uh, on an envelope and I send it to you. Um, they're pretty expensive because they're die cut and they're weatherproof. So uh, I, I make about $1.25 per, and that's a, that's a way for you guys to help me contribute to the channel, you know? I appreciate it very much. Uh, also, thanks to um, Dwight Green from Akron, Ohio, who uh, every time he fixes his machine, he puts one of my stickers on there. So he bought a... He bought a bunch the other day. I really appreciate it, Dwight. Thank you very much. That helps get the name out there, too, you know. And there's a uh, picture at the end of the uh, thank you. Watch this while I take this wheel off. I'm going to take the valve out. Uh, not that any air is going to come out, I don't think. But anyhow. Oh, by the way, this is day 17 of my quarantine. I'm, I, I guess it's not called self-isolation. Self-isolation is if you have symptoms and you think you might have it, uh, then you, you self-isolate. When you're quarantined, you're just staying away from people. Um... I saw this, a friend of mine, Andy from Jericho, you know, my buddy that I go on vacation with, and we also bought him a Super Bronco, whatever. Uh, anyway, that guy, he, uh, he sent me this long video yesterday, and this valve is not coming off, man. He sent me a long video, and he says, this is very important for you to watch. And um, I didn't watch it until I had some downtime yesterday. This valve is stuck in here. Anyway, it was a, it was a pulmonary doctor who works on people's lung problems on a regular basis, right? But then now all he's working on is COVID-19 cases, right? So that guy is like with the sickest people every day, you know what I mean? And so, you know what he was telling me? Well, he wasn't telling me, but he was telling everybody in his one hour long video, right? That uh, there's just a few things you need to do to ensure that you don't get it. And it's so, 
it's so simple, okay? He says that when people wear masks, right? People like us, not medical professionals, just regular people wearing masks. That really, it, it, I mean, it does prevent it, but that's not the reason why you're supposed to wear them. And the reason why they tell us that you, we don't have to wear N95 masks, right? Is because N95 masks are basically for guys like him who are like intubating people and they're like, their face is right there with that COVID-19 patient. And when they're administering the test, the patient coughs and coughs and all this, the droplets of your saliva, whatever, can get into your face, whatever, right? And that's why they have face shields and stuff. But he says that when people like us who wear masks, you can just wear a scarf or a handkerchief, or whatever, that's not really doing anything. But all that's doing is it's training us to, here it is, don't touch your face. That's the whole deal is that they don't want you to touch your face because let's say you go and open a doorknob, right? And then you touch your face, your eyes, your nose, or your mouth, right? If that doorknob was dirty and infected with somebody who had COVID-19, guess what? When you touch your eye, your nose, and your mouth or your face, you just got it. That's how you get it. Okay. Uh, there's only like a 0.01% chance that if somebody sneezes who has it, it's in the air and you walk by and you breathe in some of that, that's that 0.01% chance that you'll get it. So it's, if you stay six feet away from somebody and don't touch anybody, you won't get it. However, if somebody touches something like a railing of a stairs or something like that, who has it, and now you just touched it with your bare hands. And then later on, like a minute or two later, you'll go scratch your nose. You got it. That's it. You just got it. So the key is if you don't want to get it, don't touch anybody, stay away for six feet, right? Don't touch your face. And if you have to touch your face, purell your hands and wash your hands before you touch your face. That's how, if everybody in America knew that, right? This would go away, guaranteed. And look, I'm guilty of that stuff because A, I don't really wash my hands all that often. My wife gets on my case all the time. Did you wash your hands? You know, she doesn't really talk like that but it's mu much more interesting when I mimic that. Um, I I'm guilty of that myself, okay? Um, and if you can't wash your hands, carry some hand sanitizer, Purell. And every time you touch anything, Purell. At least do it before you touch your face. But as long as you don't touch your face, you should be all right. So, Dr. Henry just told you how to avoid COVID-19. And what I'd like to know is what the hell happened to COVID-1 through 18? Why don't you just take the cure, the vaccines, from COVID 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 18, put them all together into a mix, and inject somebody that's critical with it, and see if it works. Henry, there's no such thing as COVID 1 through 18. I says, how do you know? COVID 19 is because it happened in 2019. I said, really? My alter ego is uh, smarter than the average bear. All right, I just used up all this ATF in here. <laughs> so, uh, I hope that's a lesson to you fellas. And for y'all that are living in like middle America and you don't have any cases, right? It's coming, baby. All you need is somebody to go over there with it and you're Dunsky. Use Perel, don't touch anybody, stay away six feet. And for God's sakes, don't touch your face. Dr. Henry has spoken. So I hope that helps you guys out on uh, learning a little bit more about it. That's pretty good. Not that I'm a doctor, but I have seen every episode of House. So that kind of makes me an expert. I broke the cotter pin when I took this off. So I got a brand new one here. You see that there's a grease fitting over here. Yesterday I was showing this, but I didn't catch it on camera very well. Hopefully you guys can see it now. It's not easy to get it in there because it, um, it's 
not really aligned. There you go. See that? See how it went in there? The squeeze gun I got from my buddy Doug Leap over at Doug's Mowers and Blowers in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Don't waste anything. And this is messy. Ooh. Really messy, man. Ugh, God. Oh, man. Henry, don't get so frustrated so fast. You're gonna get high blood pressure. Well, that's true. That is true. Well, these gloves are now Dunsky. Henry, touch your face with that. You touch your face with that. So I just put it on, put the washer on, finding the hole. Man, that is that is a long cotter pin. That's what she said. I'm just gonna wrap this cotter pin around the. <laughs> I got the glove stuck on there. It's now rubber, rubberized. Rubberized. Yes, rubberized. <clears throat> See, for instance, this this um, pretend the grease is COVID nineteen. Everything I touch, I just touch the wheel, it brushed up against this, brushed up against that. Next guy that comes, touches it, touches his face, that's it, he's got it, you know? That's just how easy it is. Uh, when I was in the airlines, right, when we had to clean up vomit, yes, that's right, it's a glamorous job. I have, sometimes when people throw up, I have to clean up the vomit, right? And you just finish cleaning it up with the kitty litter and scooping it up and all that. So when you take it off, right, you're supposed to go, you're supposed to pull it up like this, right? Uh, Wait a minute, you're supposed to take your hands and you go like this, right? And then you hold it. Then you take your finger and you stick it underneath your glove and then pull it like this. So then you could just throw this out and not touch any of the contaminants. And then you go wash your hands. So now I'm refilling my canister with some semi-synthetic Lucas Oil automatic transmission fluid from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. You know what I forgot to do, guys, before I put the wheel on? What did I forget to do before I put the wheel on? What's fun when I do this? That's right, bouncing it around and stuff. So, I forgot to do that before I put it on. So you know what? I'm just gonna have to spin this tire around crazy right round like a record baby right round 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 so that's it for today i know it's a short episode today but it's just tightening up and buttoning up the loose ends that i need to do for this tractor not to mention it's so muddy on my yard because of the past two days we've had rain that it's uh, just too much trouble to move this out just to sit in the rain, you know what I mean? I don't think I'm ready to work on my next tractor yet. I have to get that Honda lawnmower that I got for free. That's right, free the other day from my neighbor. While I was filming on camera, the neighbor walks over with this lawnmower, Honda Harmony uh, 2. Um, 216, I believe, quadru 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 cut. nice lawnmower, you know. Uh, anyway, as I was pulling it three times, the third pull started the engine, ran great and all that, but that third pull, I pulled the recoil starter right off. So I think I have an extra recoil starter. If not, I'm going to uh, replace the rope and then clean that baby up, take some pictures and list that for sale. If I can't sell tractors, maybe I'll sell a a lawnmower, you know what I mean? But today, we used some Rust-Oleum uh, spray paint. Got that hood looking really nice. Cherry red. This sunrise red, by the way, matches almost perfectly with this Troy Built tractor, you know, the Troy Built Super Bronco or the Pony. Also, we put some uh, ATF into the tire on the other side, and uh, hopefully that'll be fixed too. So, uh, thanks very much for joining me today again. And uh, I appreciate all the time that you guys uh, 
take to watch my videos and hopefully you'll share them with your friends and uh, help me get more subscribers because at the end of the day um, the more people that I reach um, the better it is for everybody it's entertainment you know what I'm talking about but uh, anyway I gotta go do my taxes man have you guys done yours yet see you guys next time on mowers and blowers Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at MowersBlowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next one. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.